I wish I could record and play back music. Don't you know? There's already centuries worth of technology dedicated to just that. For the purpose of this video, we will be defining music devices as key, influential technology that can record and playback sound, and whose usage is historically for music. Key technology meaning that those that use new methods to play music or those that were insanely popular. First, the phonograph, invented by Edison in 1877, was the first device recorded to be able to both record and playback music. Sound was input through a receiver, which was a needle-like stylus that etched into a vibrating membrane known as the diaphragm. The stylus could be turned with a hand crank. For output, the needle would play through those etched marks and those vibrations would be amplified when played back. In 1887, German-American inventor Emil Berliner invented the gramophone. The gramophone is the blueprint for modern-day records. This device could record and replace sound. A disc music player, similar to the a needle, reads the groove in the disc and transmits the vibrations into a diaphragm that plays through the phone. It is powered by a spring-driven motor. However, the first record player was not invented until 1895, with Berliner's idea in mind. Victor's talking machine firm skyrocketed the sales through the 40s. The record player dominated the market up until the 1950s. CDs, invented by Russell in the 1960s, utilizes optical technology for high quality sounds. CDs, or compact discs, are composed of three layers. The top layer is a combination of plastic and lacquer, the middle is aluminum, and the bottom layer plastic. A laser burns this disc to represent numbers. The places burned, the pits, represent ones whereas lands, the surface is not burned, are zero. The CD spins while a laser and photoreceptor reads it. Pits reflect their laser and a photocell sends one, otherwise it's registered as a zero. Cassette tapes, introduced by Philips in 1962, utilizes magnetism to produce sound. Cassette players enclose a strip of magnetic tape that is key to their usage. It is fed and taken through four reels designed to supply and take up the tape without tangle. The tape is made of plastic, but coated with a magnetic strip. There are two heads responsible for the in and output of sound. The record head rubs the tape to create a magnetic field and inputs. The playback head reproduces these magnetic patterns to output sound. An 8-track tape was created in 1964, headed by Lear Jet. It preceded the similar quadraphonic format and utilized endless loop tape cartridges to make recording easier. The tape goes clockwise through a roller. It is then pressed by a playback head and pinched by another roller. The tape, which is separated into eight channels, can play two tracks at once. The Walkman Developed by Sony in 1979, it works through tape. The tape passes over a head that transmits a matching electrical signal that vibrates a diaphragm and that creates the sound waves. MP3 players and Apple iPods. The first successful attempt of an MP3 player was in 1997 by Tomislav Uzelak, an employee at an advanced multimedia company. This was the most updated music device until about 2001 when Apple created a competition. The first iPod was invented in October 23, 2001 by Steve Jobs. Both devices have the same qualities. How it works? MP3 players work by storing music digitally in long strings of bits. A processor loads and transforms the digital information into sound frequencies that are played by the speaker. And the differences between MP3 players and Apple iPods. Although the iPod is an MP3 player, it has specific features and designs, such as the classic iPod Touch, iPod Shuffle, and iPod Mini, and etc. The music for iPods have to be transferred from iTunes. 
The music player technology is always advancing and in the future there will most likely be many more to come. So did you learn anything from that? Huh?